So I uh, was kind of, um, somebody has asked me about the, why I have all the different guitars and I always say that it's not really because of a certain number, it's a, a certain um, representation I guess I could say. Or, um, so most of the guitars I have are actually used for a particular type, style of music or artist, or they just have some kind of emotional significance for me maybe. So over here on the right are the uh, two earliest guitars I have. Um, the Honer is the earliest one that I had that I played. I've probably, I was, probably got that one when I was 15, one of the first guitars I bought. And uh, I went through this stage where I had people write on it whenever they would, whenever I would play with them or something like that. But it isn't really the best guitar, but um, it still plays. I don't know if it still holds the tune or not. I haven't done anything with it. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's in open E right now. But um, uh, so uh, yeah, I would, it still sounds decent. Um, it's honer. It's held together over the years. So, and then the Tysco is the first electric I had. And I didn't even know, I mean, I, I played, I think, uh, Fly a Rabbit and Fly, <laughs> one string, one note. I didn't even know how to do Smoke on the Water at that time. I was just making whatever notes I could figure out. Um, so this Tysco is definitely the, the first electric guitar I had. And it's actually, I've the, the, the actual one I actually gave to my nephew, one of my, I think, passed around to the nephews. And so I just I purchased another one, just so I could have it as a representation of what I had. It's exactly the same thing, it's actually maybe in a little bit better shape. Um, and these two down here don't really mean anything. These are pawn shop. These I was using these for parts guitars, and the ma that backpacker is actually Andrew's. I'm restringing for it for whenever he gets back into guitar. So those are just more project guitars. And then uh, this guitar was my first camping guitar. And I bought just to go camping, and it's kind of like it's an applause AE38. It's acoustic electric, and um, it, you know it's got a kind of the plastic shell back, so it's really durable. And um, I, you know, I, I think I bought that when I was living in Georgia in the early '90s. But that was really my kick around guitar. That was a guitar I took um, a lot of places with me to play. And it's got a really pretty neat sound, but I like that it's got the oval inlays on the fretboard and it's got the weird devil looking horn headstock it's kind of cool um but that one is just a good beat up guitar beat around guitar um so that um is just purely to take um, take places where i don't care if it gets beaten up and this guitar is the first guitar that i actually made myself it's a kit guitar from Stu mac so it represents just a project in, in you know, guitar building, you know, and it's, you know, it's not the best, you know, it's a, what do you expect from somebody with their first guitar, but it's meant to, it's meant to be the, the uh, D38, or D28 copy from Martin. And, you know, the action is super high on it because I didn't really adjust it well, I didn't, didn't really know what I was doing, so I actually use it as a kind of a slide guitar. Um, I keep it in open E2, so it should be. Oh my God. Yeah, it makes me play desperately. But that one, I since it's such a high action, I like to play slide on that one. That's really fun to play slide on. And then, then this guitar is the only tw the twelve string electric or the twelve string acoustic electric that I use for uh, playing like Gordon Lightfoot songs. He's like almost all twelve string. So good Led Zeppelin songs. Um, a lot of Led Zeppelin three stuff, but mostly Gordon Lightfoot. And then this is an electric version of the 12 string. Um, this is a Dan Electro. This is similar to what Jimmy Page uses on things like Cashmere and in the the second section of Stairway to Heaven, and um, also uh, like the Rain Song stuff like that. So I use that. It's fun. This is a lot of fun to play 12 string electric. Really cool. I don't know how well tuned it is either, but not too bad. It would come back pretty well. But yeah. And then um, this guitar is the Fender Telecaster, 
So that's just for like country western type stuff and also super early Led Zeppelin stuff. Led Zeppelin 1 um, that was a lot of Telecaster. I think I did a video on this guitar even. So there's stuff on specifically about this, but this is a great rocking guitar. It's, it's got a really nice, um, kind of a, a crunchy sound to it. But um, I like it. It's got the, with the maple neck, it's a little bit brighter, but it's also got really good crunch to it. Good rock and roll guitar. And then this one is the uh, an American Stratocaster. And what I like about it is it's got the like the early 70s headstock to it, and it's got um, uh, the Texas um, uh, single coil pickups in it. Um, that gives it it's it's really a good twangy sound, but it's also got a smooth rhythm, really smooth rhythm. So uh, this is a good guitar for um, uh, things like Stevie Ray Vaughan music and and stuff like that if you want to really kind of a, a Texas twang or uh, even a nice rhythm. Um, so that's uh, that's what this, car, this guitar I use primarily for. And then this, this also is a Stratocaster, so this is a, the first case where I have two of the same model. Um, this is the first kind of real electric guitar, a serious electric guitar. The Tysco I had earlier really isn't anything that anyone would play in a band situation or anything like that. But the Stratocaster is certainly could hold its own even, you know, professionally uh, um, for somebody. And this is, you know, so this this guitar really is a, a sentimental thing for me because I've had it, it's probably one of the oldest electric guitars i had it since um, early 90s. I bought it when I was living in Arkansas and I've done a lot of work to it. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's made in Mexico, um, so it's it's not like what you would call a core model like this one. This is, you know, the real standard series for Fender, but this is the made in Mexico, the low, kind of the lower end. But I've done so much work to it, it's got, I would never change the value to it, but um, certainly it's it's sound quality and it, what it can do is um, very, very, very good. But uh, this is this is one of the things where I, I actually went to uh, try to emulate um, Dave Gilmore, and I actually bought the a preloaded pick guard that had all the the pickups that he he was using for uh, like the wall setup, so it's got the Seymour Duncan in the in the bridge position. It's got the extra switch there for uh, um, so you can run all three pickups at once. Uh, excuse me, I, you can in include the neck pickup. You can always include all three pickups at once here, but in this position, it would normally be just this pickup. But when you have the switch, you can throw this switch and it lets you add the bridge pickup. So this which basically lets you add the, the neck pickup anywhere and the bridge pickup anywhere. It kind of syncs them together. But anyway, so uh, that's what this guitar is for, is more uh, stuff like the wall, comfor comfortably numb, stuff like that. You can get a really decent um, tone out of this. So this is one where I, you, you might say I have a duplicate, but really I don't because they still have a totally different sound quality to them. Okay, now moving into the, so these are all like the single coils where you have just one, one winding of, uh, of um, wire around it. You know, so it gives you a really, a, I mean, not really a thin sound, but a very kind of a crisp sound. And, and one of the things I don't like about single coil pickups is that they tend to have a lot of noise to them because they, they, they can pick up a lot of the, um, um, electric signals that are in the air, like from lights and things like that. So you get a lot of hum uh, from them, so they can be kind of annoying. But, but you know, you just got to turn the amp up higher. <laughs> um, but now we're moving into the, the double coil pickup stuff, where you have actually two windings, and it's difficult to see. I'll show you in this one before I... But there's two coils together, and they're wound um, out of phase, I guess you'd say, and they cancel. So similar signals they pick up will cancel each other because they're out of phase so they don't have the the hum or the noise and that's why they call them you also hear them called humbuckers but so now, now we're moving into the Gibson range so we were talking about the fenders so this is the Gibson SG and this represents a lot of early rock and roll and you know the classic rock type stuff Angus Young of course is famous for playing an SG also Allman Brothers um, the uh 
Um, Dickie Betts played the SG and um, but it's a uh, it's a little bit more difficult to play because it's got a really wide neck and um, you know so it's a it's a little bit harder to play but it's got a really <clears throat> good crunching sound to it it's an awesome guitar the Gibson SG is just one of my favorites <clears throat> and it's a uh, like like I said it's and even early uh, Cream and early Eric Clapton he used the SG a lot. Um, I haven't learned a lot of Frank Zappa and played a lot of Frank Zappa, but Frank Zappa is also famous for playing an SG. Um, so very, very unique, very special sound to this. And this one is a, a guitar I, I, if I haven't done a whole video on, I'm going to do a whole video, but I, this is one I actually built or rebuilt from a guitar that was given to me. It used to be a black Ibanez, but the neck broke on it, and um, I tried for years to re repair and replace the neck, and I finally ended up just going and buying pawn shop guitars and finding a neck that would fit and I ended up having to refit it I had to reset the bridge so you can you can see the where the bridge pins were at one point that I had actually had to move it down to get the intonation right on it but this is another one where you know it's you know it's not priceless from a monetary standpoint but you just can't purchase something like it and it's got so much sentimental value and history to it <clears throat> you know it just you know, it, it it is it is more like the SG obviously in the looks because it's, it was made by Ibanez and, <clears throat> and one of the stories behind it is it's it was a lawsuit against Ibanez from from Gibson because it was so exacting to their their measurements. I mean, you look at the SG. I mean, just this exact same body style. Um, so they made it for a couple of years, but the pickups that were in it were just like the um, really good pickups. Um, these aren't the original pickups I actually put in, um, kind of more of the Jimmy Page style um, humbuckers, really, um, really um, uh, high output humbuckers. So I do that. This is why I put a lot of leads up on stuff on this, and it's got push pull um, uh, uh, potentiometers that let you adjust. You can make these single coil if you want to get the single coil kind of sound, or you can get them out of phase. Jimmy Page did a lot of stuff where it was out of phase. So this is kind of set where I have this guitar is set up for Pink Floyd type stuff. This is really set up and specific to Led Zeppelin type stuff. If I want to play Led Zeppelin stuff. I pull this down. And then moving over here, this is the um, this is a Gibson um, tribute for the uh, double cutaway, the DC double cutaway. It's a Les Paul also, the first Les Paul in my collection. Not not the first one I got, but the first one I'm going to cover. But what's special about it is the, the these are uh, what they call P90 um, pickups. They're single coil pickups, but they're really high output. And this, this is like one of the loudest guitars that you can play, and it's got a really great crunching sound. This is good for, to me, I like to play things like ZZ Top on this and, um, you know, Ted Nugent sounds the, where you've got that really driving, uh, really driving kind of mildly distorted, but very unique, um, classic rock sound. So this is good for ZZ Top primarily and, um, and Ted Nugent, even Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I can just, I can, it's pretty much an all around kind of guitar. And this, this is the Les Paul Standard. So this is the classic Jimmy Page guitar. Um, you know, if you want to play things like Led Zeppelin II and you want to use the, the one that, that he might have played or something similar to what he might have played, it would be this. So this is, you know, for specific Led Zeppelin II, where this is for all around. You can play anything from, you know, the Led Zeppelin I to also... Uh, Led Zeppelin IV and, and Houses of the Holy, you can get. But this is really a Led Zeppelin II, the classic Jimmy Page sound, a whole lot of love, heartbreaker, that kind of stuff. Um, so believe it or not, I mean, this is a, a really good sounding guitar, but it's got to be really loud. And, um, and I, I can actually do better with these with these guitars, but these rep, this represents um, the Jimmy Page type music. So... To be honest with you, this I, I don't pull this down as much as I might some of the others just because it's not as versatile. It's got a very nice and unique sound, and it's very special, but um, but I can do a lot of the same things on some of the other guitars. So um, this is just, and it's such a beautiful guitar, and and I just, I, I like to look at it. <laughs>
So maybe this one is it was, would be expendable in the collection, but not really because it's such a representative guitar, but I don't use it as much. And this represents the very first Les Paul I bought. I bought it at a pawn shop in the 90s. And it's special because it's the very first, um, before they had a Led Zeppelin Studio Edition, or not a Les, a Les Paul Studio Edition, they made this guitar, and it was, this is the XR1. And one of the things that makes, um, that's about these guitars is they're expensive because of all the details on them. And because these were meant to be traveling and, you know, professionally played, they, they put this plastic around the edge and the plastic around the frets, fretboard. But you don't see on other guitars like this, you don't see the plastic binding on here. And, and even on this one, you don't see the plastic binding. Well, that, that's meant to protect the fretboard from, you know, when it get, might get knocked up against things and even the body. So when the body gets knocked up against things, you see that, it, that this one could have used that, you know, because that's what happens when you don't have the binding is you get the little nicks in it. But, you know, this guitar was made in 1981. And it's also got, the, um, it's got a very special set of pickups in it that were unique to this um, model in this particular year. And I think they might have put it in a couple others, the Dirty Fingers, and they're extremely high output um, uh, double, double coil humbuckers and this one this one um also you can get a very similar sound as this one for like a zz top um and um you know ted Nugent type so this one i do play because it's just got i just i just like to play and it's also it's got a, a lot of sentimental value i've had it forever and um this one's probably <clears throat> from what i paid for it, i think i paid 700 dollars for it at a pawn shop in the 90s and it's uh, over eighteen hundred dollars now on on reverb, just because it's rare now because the early studio version, and because the pickups are kind of special and they're kind of hard to find. So the Les Paul XR1 is a is a really unique Les Paul and one of my favorites. And then uh, this guitar is the Paul Reed Smith PRS Custom Twenty Four, and uh, this one is a uh, just. To, um, it's got a very unique sound, and it's I have it just because um, I wanted a, a the the PRS. Cause I remember when I really loved the bird inlays, and it's also very versatile. Um, they can I can play pretty much anything I want on it, kind of like this guitar, and this guitar it is very very useful for different styles. If I if I'm going to be sitting down, I'm not really sure what I'm going to play. So this oftentimes I'll put, pick this one up, um, but. Uh, what I do specifically use this one for is are things like Rush songs, like um, movie, anything off moving pictures. It really does a really good job of reproducing um, the Rush sounds. Um, he used the Les Paul standard a lot. He also used a um, ES-335, I think it was, which I don't have in my collection. I, I'm not really into those, but, you know, maybe. Yeah. But, um, uh, but it's hard to get the sound of Rush off of this because I, I, yeah, I think he did a lot, there's a lot of uh, effects involved and so you, it's hard to get, you know, that that Rush tone on that on the Les Paul, but it's really easy on this one it's got, I don't know whether it's the, the way the humbuckers are wound particularly to this one, but it's really easy to get that, that Rush sound on it and then one of the modifications I did is I put in um, Ghost Acoustic um, saddles in here. So these are actually, each one of these is a piezo um, pickup that will give you kind of the acoustic guitar sound. So this um, switch lets you turn on, move from the uh, uh, the strings getting picked up by these pickups to getting picked up by the ghost acoustics. So it turns the guitar into an acoustic sounding guitar. And that's really a uh, really cool sound. Um, so you can play things like uh, over the hills and far away where it starts off with an acoustic guitar and then goes into electric or things like um, Closer to the Heart by Rush that also start off with kind of it's not I don't think he starts off acoustic but I like the way it sounds when you play it acoustic and then go into the the main riffs that are electric so this uh, this one I play if I want to do a combination of acoustic and electric music um, without having to switch guitars okay. and then this is the uh, Gretsch um, I forget the model; it's a number style, but um, I like the double cutaway. And but this is this is really good for uh, things like um, uh, um, Tom Petty and Heartbreakers. Um, 
I, I think he used the Gretsch on a lot of stuff. Um, I think he used Dan Electro a lot and the ES-335, but I can really get a really good um, Tom Petty tone out of this. And I've also noticed it's not my favorite style, but, you know, like rockabilly stuff. Um, like uh, Stray Cats, you can... This is a good one for that. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't really care for that kind of music, but I get the, I can recognize that tone when I'm playing it. So if I ever was to get into it, that's probably be what I would what I would play for that. But I use this if I'm going to play like Tom Petty songs, um, electric. And then this is this is just my representative bass, super cheap Ibanez. Just if I want to sit down and play bass and and you know do whatever I want on that. Um, so that's that's just for playing around. And then this is uh, one of the mandolins I've tried to learn play mandolin on. So that's still kind of in progress. So um, yeah, I, I use that. Like I try to I do a lot of Led Zeppelin and stuff. Like um, going to California, I played on that. And then Black Mountainside, I like to play that on on this. And then this guitar is the uh, um, Ibanez. Uh, not uh, is the Epiphone. SG that I used to help me build this guitar. I wanted to, there's a, I needed some parts off of this, like, um, um, and I, this is, this is like the absolute super cheap, this is like a hundred dollar guitar. That is mostly good for parts, um, but I put the, I wanted something to put the original pickups from that, um, lawsuit guitar. I remember I replaced these with the Led Zeppelin. So the lawsuit guitar was famous because it had really good pickups in it, really good humbuckers, and so I put them in this guitar, just so they had a place to play. So the uh, the whammy bar, and the the switch, and the uh, pickups are from the lawsuit, the, the original Ibanez SG. And as a matter of fact, the, one of the reasons I bought it, this particular one, the SG, was this is what that Ibanez kind of looked like when I bought it from my friend Jerry. It kind of had this kind of look to it. It was a black, all black guitar um, with the whammy bar on it. So you might say this kind of represents that guitar, this guitar before I rebuilt it. Okay. And this is an ele another acoustic electric six string that really, if I had any, if you could say I had um, duplicates of anything. This is, this is the, I, I do have two acoustic six strings that I use that are just all around six string acoustic guitars. Um, you know, I sh I've only shown you one acoustic six string so far and that was early on. That was like my beat up campground guitar that had the plastic back. So this is my first, the first acoustic six string in the, in the collection that I use and it's just for playing any old, any old kind of folk song you want. I do a lot of Steve Miller on it and a lot of, um, Jethro Tall and pretty much any old Fleetwood Mac, every kind of Fleetwood Mac on there. It's also acoustic electric, so you can play that as well. Um, so this is it's a breed love. It's a really nice sounding guitar, and it's wasn't too expensive. So it's a, it's one if I were to take it and if I was to go play somewhere like um, over at someone's house or in a coffee shop, this is probably the one I would take. Um, I'd play that. And this guitar is the one that I play the most sitting at my desk, and that's why it's got a spot sitting here. This is the Martin HD28. Um, so this is probably the one I play absolutely the most. So if I'm waiting for a model or program to load or something like that, I'm waiting for uh, you know, something to happen um, at work in the me between meetings or something, and I'd, I'll pick it up for a few minutes and just play on it. Um, but, th you know, this has also got a lot of sentimental value. It, I bought it at Elderly Instruments in uh, Lansing and um, I got a really good deal on it because it had had a, uh, you can't see it, but it's got a little crack here it has been repaired and some buddy put like a some kind of a marker on mark on there so um, you know, so it's, you know, it's a it's, it's quite an expensive guitar and I got a really good deal on it so because it had these cosmetic defects and I've since put in a, in a Electric a pickup in there so I can play it um, acoustic electric, but it's just it's one of, it's just a fantastic sounding guitar. But so that's my go-to guitar. So if I if you could say I have duplicates, I have two Fender Stratocasters, 
and I have two acoustic six strings, but they're totally different sounds, each of those those separate guitars. So that's why I have so many. I didn't count. I don't know if you counted, but that's the collection. And like I said, they all serve a different purpose. It's not just to have a number. So anyway, I hope you like this.